Shalom. We are continuing in the Gospel according to John. We're investigating the Hebraic background, things that people would have understood in Yeshua's time. We're in chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time will come that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. It is a very old idea that people believe that they can defend God by getting rid of those they believe are offensive to God or to his word. They did so with Paul in Acts 23, 21. But do not yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath, that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. Now are they ready, looking for a promise from you. After Paul became a believer and began defending Yeshua. Likewise from the Talmud we read, With regard to one who steals a kasva, which is any service vessel utilized in the temple, and one who curses with a sorcerer, and one who engages in intercourse with an Aramean woman, zealots strike him and kill him. Although the Torah does not say that one performs one of these actions as liable to be executed, it is permitted for anyone who zealously takes vengeance of the Lord to do so. In the case of a priest who performed the temple service in a state of ritual impurity, his priestly brethren do not bring him to court for judgment. Rather, the young men of the priesthood remove him from the temple courtyard and pierce his skull with pieces of wood. In the case of a non-priest who performed the service in the temple, Rabbi Akiva says his execution is by strangulation, and the rabbis say he is not executed with a court-imposed death penalty, Rather, he is liable to receive death at the hand of heaven. Since he curses God, it is permitted for zealots to kill him. This was much of the thought behind the priests trying to kill Yeshua, that he had somehow cursed God. And we see that the concept is brought forth into more modern days. Martin Luther wrote the following, What shall we Christians do with this rejected and condemned people, the Jews? Since they live among us, we dare not tolerate their conduct, now that we are aware of their lying and reviling and blaspheming. If we do, we become sharers in their lies, cursing and blasphemy. Thus we cannot extinguish the unquenchable fire of divine wrath, of which the prophets speak, nor can we convert the Jews. With prayer and the fear of God, we must practice a sharp mercy, to see whether we might save at least a few from the glowing flames. We dare not avenge ourselves. Vengeance a thousand times worse than we could wish them already has them by the throat. I shall give you my sincere advice. First, set fire to their synagogues or schools, and to bury and cover with dirt whatever will not burn, so that no man will ever again see a stone or cinder of them. This is to be done in honor of our Lord and of Christendom, so that God might see that we are Christians, and do not condone or knowingly tolerate such public lying, cursing, and blaspheming of his Son and of his Christians. For whatever we tolerated in the past unknowingly, and I myself was unaware of it, will be pardoned by God. But if we, now that we are informed, were to protect and shield such a house for the Jews, existing right before our very nose, in which they lie about, blaspheme, curse, vilify, and defame Christ and us, as was heard above, it would be the same as if we were doing all this and even worse ourselves, as we very well know. If you are wondering what happened to the Christians during World War II, Hitler knew the words of Luther, and he promoted the words of Luther. Back to the text in verse 5. But now I will go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asks me, Whither do you go? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will prove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe on me, 
of righteousness because I go to my Father, and you will see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. These qualities are all associated with the characteristics of Jehovah, God the Father in heaven. Isaiah 56, 1. Thus says Jehovah, keep judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Daniel 9, 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the days come, says Jehovah, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called Yehovah Tzitkenu, Yehovah our righteousness. Again, Isaiah 11, verses 3 through 5. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yehovah, speaking of the branch, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Isaiah 33:22. For Jehovah is our judge, Jehovah is our lawgiver, Jehovah is our king, he will save us. Yeshua is making a definite parallel between the characteristics and actions of the Father and himself. There is no question that people would have understood that he was the Messiah. From Micah 5.1, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. And they shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. And surely that did happen. Continuing in verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall speak not of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine, Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he says unto us? A little while, and you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said therefore, What is this that he says? A little while. We cannot tell what he says. So we have already seen him talk about the Comforter and the Spirit of Truth, which is the Holy Spirit. As far as we see in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit has been absent for about 420 years, from the end of the prophet Malachi until the coming of John the Mercer. This period is called the Intertestamental Period. It is not unusual for people to want to know and understand the secret things of God. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to Jehovah our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children, that we may do the words of all this Torah, of all this law. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Continuing in John 16, verse 19. Now Yeshua knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me? Amen, amen, I say unto you, that you shall weep and lament, and the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned to joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And you now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man takes from you. There is a concept that the Messiah appears and goes away and reappears and comes back. We see it in comparison to the moon. 
the moon appears to come and go. Even though it's the same moon, we, we see it in different phases. The Messiah is also like the moon because he reflects the light of the sun. Psalm 89, 35-37 Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. The moon represents to us a faithful witness. In Psalm 72, 17, his name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued. This is the Hebrew word, yinon, as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. So he is not the sun, but he endures as long as the sun. We see in the Gospels, Matthew 24, 23 through 24, Then if any man shall say unto him, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So he is warning them in in the framework of the Messiah coming and going, be careful what you go after. He gives him the signs. He tells him exactly what's going to happen. Luke 17, And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. From the Talmud, Rabbi Alexandri said, Rabbi Hoshua ben Levi raised the following contradiction. It is written in Isaiah 60, verse 22. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Hasten and in its time contradict each other. That is, if they be worthy, I will hasten it. And if not, they must wait till the appointed time will come. Rabbi Alexander said again, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi raised the following parallel contradiction. It is written in Daniel 7, 13. Behold, with the clouds of heaven came one like the Son of Man. It is also written in Zechariah 9, 9, lowly and riding upon an ass, therefore he is poor. That is, if they will be worthy, he will come with the clouds of heaven, and if not, he will come upon an ass. We are left with two possibilities, and no one can say beforehand which one will take place. We know that in fact, both of them will take place. In his first coming, the people are apparently not worthy, and they had to wait for an appointed time when he would come, and he comes riding on a donkey. In the future time, he will hasten it, and he will come on the clouds of heaven. From verse 23, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Amen, amen, I say unto you, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time is come when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day you shall ask me in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come again into the world. Again, I leave the world, and I go to the Father. This picture of him coming and going has a parallel in Moses. Moses is with the people. He goes up the mountain. He disappears. He comes down the mountain. He's with the people. He goes up the mountain, and he disappears, and he comes down the mountain. Yeshua comes down from heaven. He's with the people. He goes up, he disappears, and guess what? He will come back and be down the mountain with the people. Finishing in verse 29, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now you speak plainly, and do not speak a proverb. Now we are sure that you know all things, and need not that any man should ask you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Yeshua answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour comes, yes, is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Chag Pesach Sameach. Remember, we're sitting at the 
Last Supper with Yeshua in these chapters. Till next time, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye in the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.